Hi, this is Chris from dashcamcentral.com.au and this time around we're going to have a look at the menu functions of the new GitHub Git2 Action Cam. Uh, this is uh, uh, an extended version or a longer version. We're going to have a, a detailed look at the menu functions. Uh, so if you get bored after two or three minutes, I've also recorded a shorter version of this which is a quick look at the, the menu functions as well so that's uh, it's listed on, on the website uh, and on YouTube so uh, but anyway here we go there is essentially only three buttons on uh, on the Git 2 so you've got uh, your power on off button on the front you've got your shutter button on top and on the side you've got uh, your Wi-Fi on off button so for connecting the camera to Wi-Fi apps through your phone and so forth. Um, so but of course they're all multifunction buttons and uh, we'll just go through how they work now. So essentially with your power button uh, just hold it for two seconds and you'll see the git powers up and the screens come off. So if we hold that front button again four seconds camera powers off so we'll just switch that back on and then what we've got is if we just use that front button again you can see we're in video mode here what we can do is just scroll through uh, the different modes so uh, from video there and you can see the video camera on the top left of the screen and then we go over to camera so that's obviously for still photos and then we've got playback mode and we've got the system setting mode so we'll just go through these one by one as we go so we're going to go back to video mode and then just with that Wi-Fi button if we just push that it takes us into the particular settings for your video resolution and uh, you can see here that uh, we're in 1080p 60 frames per second but uh, now we use the top button to make changes and the front button to scroll through the various settings. So again, we're in, you can see we're in 1080p 60 frames. If we push that top button, we go to 1080p 30, 1080p 403, or box. Uh, video resolution 720p, 120 frames per second, 720 60, 720p 30, uh, WGA, VGA, 240 frames per second, 2160p, 24 frames per second, 1440p, 30 frames per second, 1440 and letter, uh, by 4.3 box. 1296 by 30, so you can see there's quite a few settings in there, and then just back to the 1080p, 60 frames where we started. Front button again, moving on to the next one, that's your loop recording, so that's actually used when you use this camera as a dash cam so you can switch from standard mode to dash cam mode and then again with the top button you can set your loop recording times 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes and back to off which is of course where you'd have it when you're using it as a dash cam. You've got your audio levels set to high, mute so turn the mic off, low, back to medium. Date stamp so obviously that is just date stamping your video on or off. Time lapse, so you can set your time lapse, so you can see you've got the multiple settings in there, 200 milliseconds, uh, 1 second, 2 second, 5 second, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, so a number of options there, back to off. Video snapshot timer, so that's for just taking um, self portraits or selfies, you can set that with different functions as well right up to 60 seconds and then back to off. White balance, so you've got a couple of different modes there, you've got your auto mode, cloudy, daylight, tungsten, fluorescent, blue, light blue, red, light red, or magenta, custom, auto. And you've also got custom white balance here, so if we just go into that you can see you can adjust your red and your, your blue shift. So. So just toggles between the two. If we push the top button, we're actually going to adjust those, but we're going to use the side button this time just to get back to our menu. See, we've got uh, what we call this menu button function off, 
and we can have exposure lock on that so that adjusts what you use this side button for. Have white balance lock and EV and white balance lock. Back to audio recording, uh, your gyro which is your, your image stabilization, pause record, uh, like actual recording. So that's just telling this side button what it's got to do when you press it. So, okay, back off on that front button, scroll through the next one. You can adjust your EV, uh, you can adjust your shutter speed, so you can see the settings in there, 1 to 240, 120, 60, 30, back to order. ISO, so you've got your ISO adjustments, 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, back to auto. Uh, so it's just, just colour saturation, switch to black and white, sepia, vivid, normal. So you've got a couple of settings in there that you can use. Gyro, so that's just your image stabilisation, so you can switch that on or off. So if you've got shaky hands or uh, obviously on a bike or so forth, it just takes takes that shake out of the camera. Wide dynamic range, so again, you switch that on or off. Slow motion, so you've got some slow motion settings in there, 2 by 4 by 8 by back to off. So that's your sharpness, soft, strong, normal. So that's your metering, so you can have your metering to the centre, you can have spot metering, and you can take an average metering. So we'll just set that to average. Field of view, so you can adjust the field of view on this camera, uh, so you have it a wide view, 150, which is traditional for these types of cameras, or down to 120, um, which is your narrow angle, and your wide angle, so that's 150 degrees, the other one's 120. You can actually purchase uh, a different lens set for this camera and take it down to 90 as well. Uh, but you do need to open up your camera and uh, take take the, uh, the standard lens out and swap it over for the narrow 90 degree lens. So you've got adjustable bit rates. So low, medium, high. Motion detection, so again it's on off used when you're using this camera as a dash cam. G sensor again, so when used as a G, uh, as a dash cam, you've got G sensor settings. It's, you've got low, middle, and high. And then we're back to the, the start for the settings. So again, we'll go over that side button, push that, it'll take us back to video mode. Use the front button, bring us through to camera mode, and then we can have a look by hitting the side button at the different camera settings. So you can uh, see we're sitting there at 16 megapixels so then you've got 12, 8, 5, 3 so you've got the adjustments here shutter speed so uh, let's set it auto some of the settings there right up to 10, 15, 20, 30 a minute back to auto date stamp so obviously that's on or off date stamping your uh, photos and videos. Time lapse, so again you've got the various settings, half a second, one second, two, five, ten, thirty, one minute, five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes. So a lot of these obviously for still photos are very very similar to what we just went through in the video functions. Self time mode, uh, again for self images, and EV, ISO, Color saturation, white balance, custom white balance, capture mode, so that's your single or your burst, so three sequence, ten sequence, back to single, sharpness, metering, and uh, you can take raw images with this camera as well. So that's your settings for your still or photo mode. So going back to there, use the front button and we will scroll through to uh, playback mode. Okay, here's the side button, and you can just see there you've got uh, your various functions, which is play the current file, delete the current file, lock or unlock the current file, uh, and switch slideshow between on and off. So, moving back, then use the front button, and we'll go into the camera settings. So, 
see here that we've got quick capture. So quick capture is basically if you switch that on, what it does is when the camera is powered off, instead of holding that front button down for two seconds to power on, all you need to do is give a press of the shutter button and the camera will power on and start uh, video or, or photo capture. Uh, so short press is it'll start video, long press it'll go straight into burst mode. So it's just trying to make sure that if you're using it as an action camera you, you don't miss out on that, that action shot. Obviously you can switch that on and off because you might be in a situation where you're just bumping that button all the time and powering your camera uh, on and off when you, when you really don't want it to. So switch that back to off. Uh, beep, so that's just obviously the beeps. So again, we'll switch that on just for now and we'll scroll through to the next one so you can hear it beep for a while as we scroll through the rest of these settings. And I'm not going to annoy you with this, so we'll just go all the way through and back to where we started with the front button. Scroll through and we will turn that beep off. So moving along, you've got your on screen uh, info. So I'll actually just switch that on and off. Uh, car mode, so this is where you switch your camera over to dash cam mode. So basically by switching that on, as you can see, uh, when you power the camera off um, and then use an optional car charger, uh, USB charger, it will actually power on and off uh, auto start and stop when you start and stop your engine, uh, which is a feature that very, very few other uh, action type cameras have. Um, and you also make that with uh, motion detection and your loop recording and your G-sensor. So it has most of the features of a, of a, a good quality dash cam, uh, except for GPS. So that's not something that's, that's on this particular action camera. So I'll switch that off. So custom text. So you can actually, that's just on and off at the moment, but you can insert a specific text file onto your, your micro SD, so you just set that text file on your PC, load it onto your micro SD, and then you can set that as a, a stamp on your video, so it could be your car license plate, or it could be the branding if you're, uh, if you're a business shooting video or whatever you want on there, so um, yeah, it's a handy feature to have as well. So LED status, so you can see you've got an LED on the back here, LED on the top, a couple of LEDs on the front. So you can actually scroll through some settings there and you can see we've got them all on, you can have them all off, you can have front off, you can have side off, you can have back uh, LED on and all the LED on. So we'll leave that as on. Moving along, so you've got your screen auto sleep, so that's just a power saving function, so the, the, your screen will uh, blank out after a minute, or after three minutes, or after five minutes. It's just designed to save your battery. And then you've also got uh, your camera power off, so you can power off your your camera after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, or just have it powering off straight away. One minute, three, five. So this is also handy if you're using the camera as a dash cam. So if you've got it set up and you've got your car charger plugged in, and you have your auto power off, it'll power off as soon as you turn your ignition off. If you have set that to say 30 minutes, because uh, your battery operated, um, the camera will actually stay on and record for 30 minutes after you leave your car, uh, and then it'll power off. So that's a, a handy feature to have as well in dash cam mode. Date and time settings, obviously that's, we're not going to go in and set the date and time. Uh, that's your language functions, such as frequency 50 hertz or 60 hertz. You've got your TV mode, PAL or NTSC, depending on what part of the world you're in or what your preference is. Uh, RC pairing, so that is basically uh, there's an optional remote control it comes with this. So it's a wristband, gives you some functionality, so um, you can basically pair that with your remote control wristband. Uh, RC operation, so that's if you're using the camera as uh, as a drone or something along those lines. So you've got a couple of options there. So you've got quick shoot and standard. USB prompt, so that's just uh, once you plug it into your PC, it's going to uh, prompt you to have mass storage or web camera or prompt you for one or the other. 
uh, format so that's where you can go in and format your SD card so cancel that and default settings so uh, obviously you can just go back and return to your factory settings if you've adjusted your settings and you don't like them and uh, version so that is just telling you what version of firmware you're running on the camera so again there you can see we're running the latest uh, version 1.4 uh, on this particular camera so we've got it up to date and GitHub does uh, uh, I wouldn't say quite regularly but they certainly keep it uh, up to date so you're not going to be changing firmware versions every second day but they are constantly uh, working on this camera and uh, any opportunities for improvement uh, they'll go through and do updated versions which is, is actually quite a good thing and then we're back to the start So that's it, that is the long version of your menu functions on your GitHub Git2. And that's it for now, so this is Chris from dashcamcentral.com.au.